when uh, Pastor David asked me to, uh, to share with you uh, this evening, so I start to pray, ask Joseph to pray with me, and uh, uh, God spoke to my heart for two topics. So which one, God? Uh, then I said, <clears throat> when I will go home, I will uh, get some rest and uh, uh, study uh, some and uh, see what God will give me. So, Pastor David took me to uh, a meal, puts me to sleep until we come here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Judith asked me when I wake up, are you ready? I said, for what? <laughs> <laughs> I told him, it looks like God is telling me I am in charge. I will speak to my people. You don't have to do anything. So I asked him, would you please cover my name? This is the first execute, and just for God's glory, I did not do any effort unless I speak with my king to speak to us tonight. Amen. Before I start, I just, uh, this is not my preaching, it is just a preaching. <laughs> uh, uh, the first greeting from my church, uh, MDT, Midtown Baptist Temple, and uh, God made a connection between some of the leaders with Pastor David, and we have a very, very fruitful trip uh, together in Cuba and in South Sudan. Uh, and uh, <coughs> The second greeting from my family, my wife uh, and uh, my uh, children with their spouses and uh, uh, I just would like to thank you that I have a grandson Look to me, Granda, you know I am a Georgian. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I was born in Georgia. <laughs> Judah Butrus. So he is proud that he is Georgian. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I think uh, uh, when you hired Muneen to work in GPC, you did not tell her in advance that you would have branches in Egypt and in South Sudan and so on. Is that right? But God increased the work. Yes. And I believe without his leadership, we can do nothing. That's right. And the message in the morning today we had the importance of love and revival. The importance of love in revival, and I would like to let you know if we have all the knowledge, all the spiritual gifts, without love, we are nothing. Right. But when we, we come at the first evening in our camp and we are thinking, what do we need for revival? What do we need for revival? I will build on the morning for, for what we heard from the Lord in the morning for love. So love is the foundation in everything we do in the church. Love is the foundation we do not only in the church or ministry, but also in everything in our life. My co-workers, if they are not since in the love of Christ in me or in you, we are doing nothing for the kingdom of God. That's right. I encourage in the morning when you shared about the City Union mission, 
and I just would like to share you one testimony from PC Kansas City uh, uh, Union Mission. My church sent bus every Sunday to bring people from the, uh, uh, the mission, from the Union Mission, uh, to attend the church, give them right. And uh, uh, one Sunday, God gave me Dan. Daniel, I won him in uh, uh, the fellowship or Sunday class. Next week, I saw him at the church. Dan, what are you doing here? I am attending the course of the apostle discipleship. Really? Oh, good, Dan. Good job. The following week, the church told me that Dan is asking you to baptize him. I baptized him. During my trip in South Sudan, they told me Dan passed away by COVID. <laughs> With all the sorrow we had in the church, we have even more rejoice that he is with his king, with Savior. Can you imagine if you meet somebody and you did not invest in the moment to share the gospel with him? And after a while, you heard that he passed away. Uh, I, I don't know if you have this saying that. Missourian saying, if you, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> so if you snooze the chance that God is giving you, you will lose your soul forever. But for us tonight, let's go to 2 Timothy. <clears throat> It is well known two verses, even the children know it very well, but I would like you to look with me in these two verses and others for the revival. Second Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2. Would you stand please just to read these two verses? And I would like you to read it with me. I would like us as a church <clears throat> to see the importance of this verse or this portion of the scripture for the revival. Let's read together. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commitment thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Father, I trust that you, you will speak to us tonight. And uh, I have nothing to say, but you promise. And I trust you cover my weakness by your blood and speak to me, through me, for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may see. In the book of Matthew, we see the Lord Jesus Christ told Peter, I will build my church. So if Christ will build his church, what us as a believer or as a church, what is our responsibility? What we think we have to do? By the way, when the Lord Jesus Christ command give the mission to his disciples, he did not tell them to build the church. He sent them to disciples. 
We disciple, he will build the church. We do our part. If we do our part, he will do his part. And the first statement I would like to, if anybody know here, that is the revival is not the quantity, it is the quality. What if we have 1,000 members here and have nothing, have no clue about what the Bible says? What if we have 1,000 people behave like children? What if we have believers, we can't trust them in anything? Is this a very viable? It's not at all. Even God made it clear from the beginning. In the book of Ezekiel, he said, I, I look how many men he looks for, just to do for the land, for the, the earth, for the people. Come. He is looking for a good one. He is looking for a man to stand. God is looking for the quality, not for the quantity. So here, Paul is telling Timothy the importance of discipleship. And the discipleship is not the knowledge of the Bible, it is the life of the Bible. We have two types uh, we can see in, in my church back home in, in Kansas City. Some went through, we have 18 lessons. Some went through the lessons and know very well the information, but they still behave like babes. Mm. Mm. But some, you can just see from, uh, you know, uh, they, they are ready to minister, ready to serve humble, uh, uh, you know, would like to glorify God in everything they are doing. I believe this is the time of the salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ is looking for us. Yes. And uh, all of us know that Jesus, during his three and a half years in the earth, he lived in the earth with only twelve. 120 max. Think with me, if Christ died and uh, ascended to heaven after his resurrection, would thou the twelve disciples? We would never see you from India. But because of his disciples, we have here many believers from different countries. No. Jesus did nothing, just train the, his disciples. I mean, besides salvation, <laughs> he did not do nothing important. He did not go to the cross until he was sure that the twelve are ready for the mission. In John 17, he said, I finished the work you gave me. What work you finished? You did not crucify yet. I'm ready to die now. And the old chapter 17 in the book of John, just to pay the context about his disciples. So he ministered to the nation of Israel and prepare that went for the mission, the great mission. <coughs> Discipleship. And uh, many, many churches just, uh, you know, the, the process of planting the churches, there's two types I saw through my, my life. We can have the building, and invite famous preacher and invite people around, we will have big number of people in the church to start the church. And all of them are babes. Uh -huh. 
But the biblical way of planting the church is to look for one family, one person, win him to Christ, start to disciple him, and train him to disciple, to be discipler. Amen. And then you both do the same work yeah. until you reach a, a number, you can function as a group. And your church will send you as a group from the same church to start a church in a different way. This is the biblical way. This is what I am praying to do in Kansas City. Uh, when I shared Pastor David that is in my age, he said, you know, your age, you are a kid. Yeah, I, I, I think if, if God will give me a chance to, to live, I will live 15, 20 years if he allows me. Uh, my, my purpose besides my ministry in the Middle East, just to have a mission-focused church for Arabic speaking in Kansas City, and I am ready to give it to anyone from uh, of my disciples. Uh, even the first year we will start. There is many things I need to accomplish with judges in the Middle East. So I think also we are praying for your nation to start a church here. This is the biblical way. God will give you even one person. Don't worry about the time. But invest in him or in them as a family the word of God. Yes. Until they will be disciples. Amen. You will not disciple everybody will come. They will disciple. You will help the leader after that. And here we, it is improvement for what I am saying. <coughs> Pastor David, Dr. Robert Lysayus invested in us. And now, what we have in Egypt or in South Sudan, their fruit. We plan it is their fruit. This is the discipleship. Most of the pastors did not decide. Why? Because I don't like to invest in somebody like Pastor Anna. Then, excuse me, we'll take him from the church. This is their mentality. So this is my throne. I will not give a chance to any disciple to come here until I die. This is my throne. No, it's not yours. That's right. And I continue, this is not only in a biblical principle, it is a biblical principle you can apply to every aspect in life. If you are managing any company and you did not or you don't train somebody to replace you when you will be absent and this something will happen and you die, you leave, you whatever, what will happen to your position? It is the same thing in everything in life. The discipleship. And the disciple, it means we teach the disciples the whole counselor of God. Not giving some milk teaching. No, we would like to take them from you know, a small uh, first principle of the word of God to the deep, to the meat of the word, so we can the we can trust in their maturity. We can trust something in them. We can give them commission to do, and we have no worry about that. So discipleship. The second thing I would like to share you, 
you can't decide it without sharing the gospel, without evangelizing. That's right. Let's go to Second Corinthians 5. Start reading from uh, verse uh, 17. Some people just say that it, you know, uh, evangelizing it is, it is not for all the believers. No, it is for every believer. Amen. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let me uh, uh, back up here. Uh, verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trust trespasses unto them, and he has committed unto us what? The word of reconciliation. He gave the word of reconciliation to whom? To us. Yeah. Us. Not me, Paul said. No, to us as a church, as a believer. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. So this is, you can decide it without it, you are ambassador for Christ, without it sharing the gospel, without it sharing the good news. Look your neighbor say, I am ambassador. <laughs> if you trust, you are ambassador, you need to do the work of ambassador. If you reconcile with God, you need to take the word of reconciliation to others. Reconcile with God through Christ. Like what happened to me. And uh, for, for this, I can tell you we can speak about everything with our friends. We can speak about everything. Money, business, economy, problem, politician. Not to share the gospel. No, you will not accept my word. So what? Share it. If he accepts, that's fine. If he does, don't accept. Oh, this is all. And I would like to set this picture in, in your mind. <clears throat> And I shared it in a Muslim girl back in Egypt <clears throat> during the last affair. I told her that I am sharing this to you because I am a friend of your family. So I don't like what happened to the rich man and Lazarus will happen to me. So I told her the story of the rich man and Lazarus. I don't like you to be in hell and telling me, Pastor Wadi, you did not share me the gospel. No, Why? Why I am suffering in hell. That's why my daughter I'm sharing you. There is no salvation. Only, only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Right. And I can tell you if a young lady accepted Christ during my last step to Egypt. What if she refused? Okay, now I am free her from her blood. You see the point? Sometimes we make it complicated, we complicate it. Make it simple. And it is your responsibility. What if the church of Christ 
did not share the gospel and did not disciple. We will not have second, third, fourth generation. That's right. Like here in the first scripture I shared you, we can see four generations in this scripture. Uh, Paul, Timothy, this will mean to each other also. So four generations. If you buy now, is there any even one disciple you can say, I am deciding that man? My my experience with the Lord is. Somebody decided me in Saudi Arabia. It's very simple. But Matthew, he is pastoring a church now in uh, Stockton, uh, Kansas. And uh, uh, I, I, I was born again and uh, 10 years with no clue what, what the Bible said about anything. Until I went to many weekly the store in Saudi Arabia and the dear God, uh, he went also for uh, as a missionary, selling American hamburgers, uh, so and uh, make, managing fast food. So God um, connect us together, and he and Karen and his wife decided me. Amen. Not only me, I can tell you name Joseph from India. Married with a Filipino girl, and he is pastoring a church in Philippines right now. Me, uh, two, three European people. He just he decided that. He did nothing but decide. So what if he did not decide to me? I will be continue working for him to God. I will never have the honor to be pastor or to co-labor with Joseph. God has only three elements is using. He can do anything, but he chose to have only three elements. He had his word, his spirit, and his church. And his church needs to disciple others, needs to share the gospel with others need to be an ambassador for him and disciple the new believer. Amen. Last thing I would like to, to finish with, the situation having with the Lord Jesus Christ with Peter in first chapter of John. It's, it's very simple. Do you love me? you love me? Yes. So oh, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. And I will ask you, how can you feed if you are not fed? How can you give somebody anything you don't have? If you don't have, how can you give? So, two things. You need to submit yourself to learn, to grow, to be teachable, so you will be able to teach others also. By the way, there is nothing in you on the heaven, even the teaching. <laughs> yeah, nothing in you. I, I never forget uh, the word from Kelly Matthew uh, discussing about this verse, nothing in you. He said, yes, the truth is there. It is like covered with dust, and we remove the dust from the truth, and you know, wow, this is a, it's new for you, but it's not new. To be teachers with humbleness. Yes, sir. Amen. So you can get the meat of the word of God and to help you to be able not only
only to share the gospel, but also be decided and to feel And I believe all of us remember the situation in the book of Hebrews that is, even there is many years for them, they need somebody to teach them what? The principle, the first principle of the, of the word of God. And even after a long time, they need somebody to teach them, to give them men, not me. That's why I started with the quality, not the quantity. So, if we are looking for revival, if we are crying for revival, you need to start by yourself. And I like what you shared in the morning, that Bible is in the heart. It starts in your heart, so you can share the gospel. You can love, or share the gospel with love, decide it, and feed the sheep. The only thing you will take with you in heaven, the only thing, Investing in the soul of men. Amen. And we can see around us what is happening, you know, all over the world. I can just say I'm, like Pastor David said, I am a kid. Even I have a short experience. All the world is this fake. It's fake. The this investment, you can invest for the kingdom of God. So revival needs somebody understand the Bible very well, start with him or herself, and uh, grow knowing what the Bible says, sharing the gospel with others, disciple him or her with love and feed him or her with the meat of the word and help him to do the same with others and the all under the authority of the Lord Church. We can, I can tell you many people in the Middle East, I am a pastor, uh, what the church said to you? No, I, I said myself. No, it's not biblical. No. Even uh, we are praying to, to plant a church in, in Juba, South Sudan. And the one come, uh, came to meet me and Joseph, and he said, Joseph, yeah, I'm not in any church. I told Joseph, no, we will not take him. We need somebody we can trust. He has a strong biblical foundation understanding what the local church is. That's right. My prayer during this conference that God will lead every one of us to buy this command to take it in a personal way. Amen. To take it in not only a personal way, but in a lifestyle. Mm. Right. That's right. That's right. <coughs> in your during your shopping, your, uh, I can tell you many stories of what happened as I, I worked in, in Walmart to uh, cover my uh, my short of uh, support. Uh, how many times I speak with people in Arabic and English about the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, uh, what a chance it just God gave me uh, uh, to, to help many people. Uh, uh, even take their grocery to their car and uh, share, speak with them, share with them. It is lifestyle. Yes. I can tell you how many times I cried when I worked as uh, Uber drive, driver uh, uh, during my time in Colorado. 
many times just to park with a lady or a family and just to cry with them uh, for their need to the Lord. And uh, I, I never forget one day he told me, this is the first time to see a driver act like Christ. And uh, would you give me your phone? And she used to call me if she needs any ride. It's not of me, it's of him. And I know, I know my weakness very well. I am the miserable guy you can think about it. But his grace is covering me. Right. He saved me. <clears throat> and he asked me and you to take the responsibility of his kingdom as ambassador. The ambassador say only the president or the king asked him to say, told him to say. So we need to say what our king yes. has. That's right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for <coughs> your grace. Yes. Your grace is sufficient. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And would you please help us not only to speak about revival, but to live a revival. And to take all this responsibility, all this teaching, what you teach us and what you are going to teach us during this week for your glory, for your kingdom.